Kimberly. Welcome to this week's live stream. Um, we're going to do a couple things today. The first thing I was going to show you, my um, our charity quilt. It's called Threadology, and it will be benefiting Make-A-Wish. Uh, and this is the kit that we're offering. So I'll tell you a little bit about the program and how it works. Um, we donate $10,000 to Make-A-Wish. In 2019, Moda Fabrics will be donating $10,000 for Make-A-Wish, and then we will be getting um, our customers to donate so that we can hopefully raise $10,000 from you guys, and that would be $30,000. Sometimes we make it to $40,000, so it's just a great way to give back, to do something good um, for the community. What we're going to be doing is um, you have a kit. If you buy the kit, you get the pattern to make the full um Thing up front. If you don't buy the kit, we're going to have the free patterns available starting February 1st and twice a month we will be having patterns released through the end of June. The back of the quilt is pieced. I'm going to try to hope this doesn't fall um, off the wall. I can't really show too much. It's online, but it is a pieced backing. Um, and then also if you buy the pieced backing, the pattern comes with it. If not, the free pattern will be online. And what we do with the free pattern is we just ask for a donation of five dollars per pattern. Um, so if you just you know if you just like this block, you can just download that block and just pay five dollars, or you can donate more. And um, so that's kind of how our charity quilt works, and we've been doing it for maybe five years. So we've definitely over the years raised over ten hundred thousand dollars with the help of Moda Fabrics and it feels good to do something good for other people. And some people do ask, does the kit sales go to make a wish? You know, what exactly goes to make a wish? We don't make ten thousand dollars from the sale of the kits because that is like we don't make um, that. So it's just from Fat Quarter Shop, from Kevin and I, from our employees. It's just a way to give back. Um, it's not just like a set thing, it's just $10,000. So um, that's how that works. Another exciting thing that we released this week is the Perfect 10 Ruler. It is a new Creative Grits ruler. It works great for cutting um, layer cake squares because it's exactly 10 inches. It's got quarter inch lines around it. It's got you know line, just the lines you need. And it goes perfectly with our new book that is called Perfect 10. So this ruler is available on our website, so that's the first thing. And what goes with it is we have a book that is coming out, and in the book it is $14.95, so very low priced book, and you get um, 16 patterns, so it's less than a dollar per pattern. Um, it's a really great book. It'll be coming out in about two weeks. You can pre-order it and get 15% off. So um, this is the quilt on the cover. Um, the quilts are super um, beginner friendly, but you know, you can, um, there's a few blocks in there that you can make, make um, that might be a little bit more challenging, but it's a great book. And um, I'm also going to show you some blocks, maybe some different blocks from it. We just sewed these up in Bella Salas just to show you kind of a variety. And then I've got something super exciting to show you after. So these are just some of the blocks that we used. Cute little bow tie block. Um, so lots of variety and um, lots of different looks, which is what we always aim for. This is probably my favorite because it's no triangles, super easy. So yeah, this is kind of a little bit of what you'll get in the book. Um, it's going to be a great book. It's a great price. Um, such variety. And there's so much variety that we decided that we wanted to um, do something special for all our customers because y'all support us and support our books. So um, we came up with this free pattern. Now, we're going to be starting a sew along um, in October. I can't remember the exact date. Um, but basically, this is gonna be a free pattern download that you can get once a week and you'll get two blocks a week and basically you follow the guide 
with the book. So you can't make this quilt without the book. But in addition to for $14.95 for 16 quilts, you get a whole nother quilt. So I actually made this quilt last weekend. Um, super easy, lots of big prints. Um, it would work great with any um, collection. And you can see that I marked the top of it with top left for my long arm quilter because the back of my quilt is um, pieced, so it's directional. Um, so that's gonna be coming up and we will have fabric requirements online. Um, I have the sheet right here, hold on. So we're gonna start October 9th online. And this is kind of like a little sheet that we're gonna have that's gonna give you the full schedule of when you, you know, what block we're gonna download each week. Um, sometimes you make the full block, sometimes you just make a unit in the block, so you have to have the book. Um, for this quilt, you need 31 print squares. I like a lot of variety. I don't like to work with mediums or lights, so I actually use two guest room layer cakes. You're gonna need a background fabric, so you need about a four and a quarter to four and a half yards. We haven't exactly figured that out yet. And of course, binding and backing. So um, if you wanna get ahead and buy the fabric from us at Fat Quarter Shop and pre-order the book, you need one or two layer cakes, four and a half yards background, three quarter yards binding, and four and an eighth yards backing. And then, um, you know, the ruler is great. It makes it super easy. You could cut the entire quilt, all the blocks from the ruler. The only ruler you would need addition to that would be for your sashings. So that's like a great thing that we're excited to show you. And then also later in the video, I'm gonna show you how to use our brand new seam guide that was available in our sew sampler box um, last month. And we've got lots of questions on how to use it and a lot of great feedback. So I've got um, some things to show you with this. Another free thing that Fat Quarter Shop is offering you is Sarah Price designed this cute little trick-or-treat bag. She's got two little, two little boys and a little girl. And so we have some kits, um, just super simple kits. This is Dot Dot Boo by me and my sister designs. And it's a cute bag, but um, it's a free pattern on our blog. So just go to fatquartershop.com and go to the blog. And that's like another free thing for you guys. Um, so the other things I was going to talk about is um, Kimberly Stitch Squad. That's on Facebook. Um, I check it uh, at least once a day, try to answer all of your questions. It's a great community to show what you've made, get ideas. Um, so if you're interested in being in that, it's Kimberly Stitch Squad on Facebook. We also have a new YouTube membership that's $4.99 a month. Um, we're still going to have all the free videos on YouTube, all the free live streams here. It's just a way, like the first thing that the members got was a coupon. That's now expired. Next week, they're going to get a free pattern um, that I've selected. And I'm going um, to show everybody what I make, but they'll get the free pattern. So they're going to get lots of bonus things. We're going to have a live stream right after this where people can ask, like, Questions, we get so many questions on this live stream that we can't get to all of them. Um, so that's available if you're interested. You definitely don't have to do it, but it's $4.99 if you're interested. Um, and then we always have a subscriber of the week. And this week I picked Missy Christopher Ross because she showed this really awesome quilt on Facebook that looked so hard. It was made out of um, the cake mix or the layer cake mixes, some kind of triangle paper from Moda, and it's awesome. So. I will contact her after the live stream to give her a gift certificate. And then um, if y'all want to go ahead and start putting your questions and comments so that we can get to those, um, we can get to those as we go. But I'm going to go over and show you how to use the seam guide. So, oh, uh, do you want to take questions now or yeah, afterwards? We can do a couple now. All right, give me one second. I'll turn this around. Uh, we had a few people asking uh, what, if you could remind us what the name of the book was. The book is called Perfect Ten, and the ruler is called Perfect Ten. So it's all like, and it's um, the number ten. So if you search on our site, you should be able to find it. All right, and Teresa was asking, are you going to sell a kit for the sew along? Yeah, the sew along kit is online. It is called Threadology. It is going to, um, so the charity quilt, yes. 
We have a kit online called Threadology that is online, the backing set and the kit. It ships in January. For the free Perfect 10 Sew so Along, we don't have a kit, but you just need two layer cake, one or two layer cakes and the things that I mentioned so that every, and the great thing about those is you can use whatever you want. Um, I used an essential dot background, which is 8654.59, if anybody wants to make the exact um, kit that I am making. But some of our employees are going to be sewing along and some bloggers. And so we're going to show it in a ton of different fabrics, you know, like modern, reproduction, traditional, um, solids, just all kinds of colors so that you can see um, how it looks when it's put together. All right, and will the blocks be released on the blog? Yes, it will all be on the blog, but the you cannot make it without the pattern. But the blog um, inserts will be on the blog. All right, um, I'm only asking this because this person is super awesome. Gabriel Fuentes is asking, oh. can you give us a little more info on the Boo Box? Okay, so the Spooky Box is something that we introduced only to So Simpler subscribers, so they get first access we have sold 62 percent of the boxes so if you're interested in the spooky box uh, you should get it get online and get it today it will be sold out by sunday i'm predicting um, it is really cute um, i can say that the fabric in it i might have shown earlier in the program not the exact same it's the same collection not the same pattern not the same anything but um i think everyone's gonna love it it's super cute um, and back to Perfect 10, would you consider bundling the book and the ruler? So, okay, so we're going to do that, but we're going to do it after the shipment for the book goes out. And the reason why is Creative Grids, we, can, we could not release that, that ruler until they let us release it because they have a different schedule. So we could not show that ruler until like Monday of this week. But we needed to show the book so that we would have enough money to print the books because printing the books costs like, I can't even tell you how much money. So um, that's why we didn't bundle it up front. Um, so if you can just like be patient, we are gonna do it later. We just can't do it right now. And Shawnee Wallace is asking, uh, interested in the quilts along, how do we sign up? So to sign up, just go to fatquartershop.com, click on our blog, and just sign up to be notified on the newsletters. Um, around October 1st or so, that's when we're going to put um, the fabric requirements and the schedule. The schedule. Um, so I think October 9th is the first date. Um, but it's just a, it's such a cute quilt. I had so much fun making it. So that'll all be free. It'll just be the book plus the shipping. Perfect. We can continue. Okay, so for the seam guide, this is a brand new Fat Quarter Shop product, and um, I'm going to show you some different things it does. Um, obviously, uh, when I'm sitting at my sewing machine, a lot of times I might have like a two inch square or a three inch square, and I'm like, oh, I can't remember which one this is, like if I don't label with my alphabeties. Um, so I have this by my machine so that I can just quickly, that's the first thing you can do with it. The second thing you can do is um, you can mark. If you're gonna make a half square triangle, you can mark super quick. You can also cut, um, you know, you can cut with it. So that's three things you can do. Um, but what it was really meant for are these two things. There's a little plus sign that is basically a quarter inch down and a quarter inch over. And when you're making binding on like, for example, this cute little quilt that I made for my kids for Halloween is you can put, now I'm gonna complicate things here. I, you, I leave a quarter inch around on my batting when I do binding, a lot of people do not do that. So ignore, pretend that that is not there. And looking at the print on the fabric, you need to, pivot when you're making your binding a quarter inch away. So if you just put that right there, just make a little dot, and you can do that on all four sides before you go to the sewing machine. And then when you're sewing your binding, you just go down. When you get to that dot, you just back up. So it, it's great for binding because I've always wanted something like this. So this is for that. 
And then we've got one more thing that it's good for. Um, I'm probably gonna get questions on this. This is the Ghost Quilt Kit. It will be online um, next week. We are waiting for the patterns to arrive from the vendor, then came June. So as soon as we get the patterns, we will have the kit. And I made this quilt in two days, so this is super um, easy. Beginner, beginner friendly. So, I'm gonna move that because that is the upcoming book that y'all cannot see yet that I'm sewing today. And my remote control so I can watch Investigative Discovery. <laughs> so, um, so another, so we really made it for the binding and also for the um, seam guide. So this is what it's really meant for. The other things were just bonuses. So sometimes if you want to mark on your machine, um, say you want a quarter inch seam and you want to use maybe an open toe foot instead of a quarter inch foot, I would use a dull blade. You just place your, um, your needle right in the hole. Put your, um, put your foot down and then what you can do is take um, washi tape or painter's tape and this is what I would do. I would um, just put the tape down and you can either follow that or you can create an actual barrier by just putting a lot of tape down. If you do 10 layers, um, it will create basically a seam guide. So that when you're sewing, um, your fabric will be high enough and your fabric will just slide. I don't have, let's see. This fabric, like. You can create a barrier. I didn't put 10, but you know, you can, put 10 and it'll create a barrier where this is just like one of those uh, seam things that you can um, sit in. What I really like it for though, because I do have a quarter inch seam and I use a quarter inch um, foot all the time, is sometimes when I do, um, like if I want to do a wide binding or something and I want a half inch seam, I don't have a half inch foot. Or if you're a seamstress and you do three eighths of an inch, I don't have that on my, there's no, um, foot for that. So you can do it for half inch, one inch, and you can just create a guide. So I think it's a great little nifty tool. It's been selling really well. Um, I would say what I use it most for is the binding. I basically um, put all my, um, I mark all four of my corners before I get to the machine. That way when I'm at the machine, I can, I'm already ready to go. And then I also use it for um, measuring, you know, oh, what size is this? Did I cut it right? And it pretty much just stays right here by my stash in store and uh, my remote control. And what is the name of it again? It is called So Standard Seam Guide. And if you want to search it on the Fat Quarter Shop site, it's ISE-724. So that is how you use that. So um, I will just take the rest. I guess I'll just take questions from you guys. Okay. Um, I did have a few coming in. Okay. Um, also, just real quick, Instagram's having issues with audio. Um, we've got the microphone turned on, but if everyone on Instagram wants better audio, YouTube and Facebook have really good audio. Yeah, so you can go to YouTube, Facebook, and of course we will post this video on Instagram after, YouTube after, and Facebook after. So you can rewatch it. And of course you can go to Kimberly Stitch Squad. You can tag me and I will answer today and tomorrow and this weekend. I'm sewing a book that has a new book quilt. It has 72 blocks. So I will not be on there 24 hours a day, but I will be on there every couple hours. 
All right, uh, so first one is just a comment. Kim Jennings says she watches Investigation Discovery as well when she sews. Oh my gosh, I love it. And I have watched like every Joe Kinda episode like five times. And then did you see online, there was this lady this week and she had written a book called How to Get Away with Killing Your Husband. And then she killed her husband and got busted for it. Anyway, that's not funny, but it is. Um, Cindy Pope says, do you have kids for the ghost quilt? Do I what? Uh, have kids for oh, the ghost quilt. Oh, yes. So I'm going to have kids next week. Um, it is not online yet because we are waiting on the pattern and we are waiting for me to finish this binding for photos. So the coming, we'll have it online with a photo on Monday probably. And then, um, we will, um, yeah, it'll be available probably next week. And then also I could show you. I used, there's a new product from Shannon called, it's 90 inches wide backing, which I hadn't really used Minky on the back of my quilts because I don't want to piece it. It is like a, I think the product is traditionally 50, 55 inches wide, but I didn't want to put that seam. So there's a new product out, uh, 90 inches wide. So I've been putting that on some of my quilts and I like how it's, um, how the quilting really pops out. And of course my kids like that. So, um, and it's, it's not very hot in Texas. Um, so you don't really need it. It's more just for, for fun. But yeah, that's a new product out there that we have. Um, I can't find it right now, but there was a question earlier just about using different backings. Just this person I think hadn't seen anything other than cotton. So Okay, so for it. backings, there's a couple of options out there now. Minky is a soft material. Um, I, and I had used Minky on the back of crib quilts, but it is a, it's a polyester, it's thick, it's, you know, we have some new videos coming out from Teresa at Shannon Fabrics that's going to show how you use it and how you sew with it, but it does make a mess, and um, I don't have a lot of time on my hands, uh, but I, so now I'm using it on my bigger quilts because the 90 inch came out a couple months ago. You can also put lawn on the back of your quilts. Lawn is a th much thinner. You can kind of see through it. Um, it's available from Moda, an art gallery, um, and a little bit of cotton and steel, but it is a thinner, softer material. It is for if you want something, you know, for like Texas, for hot, um, where maybe you don't even put, you know, you just put like 100% cotton in it. It's very thin, um, but very soft. So great for like a baby crib quilt, something you're gonna put in the crib with a baby. So those are uh, options. And one thing that I do a lot of is I do pieced backings. So I'll show you the example of what I've started. I might be starting a little too much here. I might be giving away a little, y'all gonna have a lot of questions. So from Sweetwater, I'm in her Sweetwater label club. I make no money from saying this. She's, um, she is my friend, but she does these little labels where she sends you labels each month that have your name and sometimes they have the year. So I have a ton of them because I'm in her club. So this is going to be the center horizontal seam and the backing for the perfect 10 sew along quilt. And so as you see, since I used two layer cakes, I had a lot of extra pieces. Um, so just whatever was left over, and I actually made two extra blocks that I didn't need. So I just threw them in the back, and then I will put um, I will put the top fabric and the bottom fabric, and it's just a way to where it's my name is going to be quilted in the back. So no, you know, if you just do a label that's just a little woven label, people can unstitch that, take it out. This is going to be quilted on top of. So. Um, they cannot uh, take it out. So I, that's one thing that I've been trying to do is be super creative with my backings, um, just to kind of spice it up. But it's obviously not done, it's sitting in my, um, my little drawer. All right, uh, Cindy Krell said, can someone, can you sometime demo the Lori Holt rulers? They have oh, like cute cuts. yes, okay, so that is right here and I had your list on here. I need to go through the other questions I had. So I'm gonna kinda show you the ruler sets that she has. So the first thing she has is she just has plain rectangle rulers. They're called rectangle rulers. They have um, this little pink that you see is, um, it's like little grips so it's not gonna move. So it's, um, when you put it on fabric, it's not gonna move. So. Um, 
These are just rectangle rulers. You would use them like you would traditional ruler. So that's her first thing she has. Now she has square up rulers, which have, okay, so the rectangular rulers are pink. Her square up cute cuts are blue and they have a diagonal in them. And maybe I can show you on this. They're used for squaring up. So, if I needed to square up this ruler, there's all these lines. So I could put the line in the center of my seams. And then if I had a diagonal line, I could line it up on the diagonal. So when you're trimming a block, you can trim either your square seam or your 45 degree seam, I think that is. Um, so these are square up rulers and they're in their traditional size. The other thing that's great about these is they have this quarter inch seam allowance around. So if you're squaring up a block and you need to be a quarter inch away from a seam, you just lay it on there and you just make sure, okay, that's half inch. Let me move it. So um, these are her square up rulers that you would use for squaring up blocks. They're blue. Then her other cute cut rulers are just traditional square rulers. So if you're looking for something traditional, she's got pink and green, square, rectangle, rectangle, square. And then if you want to square up, you're looking for something to square up, she's got the set of blue. They're called cute cuts. They're available on Fat Quarter Shop's website. And she is coming, um, some of her larger sizes are coming back because they were really popular. So she will have um, some bigger rulers, uh, probably like October, November area. Let me see the other questions I had. Um, okay, we had a question on substituting pre-cuts for patterns in yardage. And on that, I would just say, what I like to do is if I have a pattern, I will just sit at my desk and just look at it. And I will look at the cutting, um, just kind of look at it, and I will just envision in my mind if I can do it. But basically, I try to use pre-cuts because they're easier to starch um, rather than yardage. So substituting pre-cuts with yardage, I would say is really just something that you just have to sit and really take the time to think about and look at. Um, and maybe if you have a block that uses um, four fa one fabric, but you have a layer cake, maybe you make four sections with four different fabrics from a layer cake. So it's really just all about being creative, um, looking at your pattern, it might take a little bit more time. There's not like a super, there's not like a science to it that's perfect. Um, also had a question on wool mats. So this is definitely something that's very popular right now. I don't use them, but I hear they're great. There are, there's woolly felted wonders and there's also the Gypsy Quilter. Those are the two brands that we sell at Fat Quarter Shop. Basically, it's a wool mat. They're pretty thick. And you would put it on your um, cutting table and then you would iron on top. And what they're good for is your fabric sinks into the wool and it makes it very flat so you get flat seams. So, I'm gonna be honest, because y'all asked me to be honest. I don't need them because I starch. So I don't need that woolly felted mat because I starch, but a lot of people like it. And the biggest question is, how do you make them not smell? So if you have a wool mat, it's made from sheep. It is made from wool. It smells like when your dog is wet. So the way to not make it smell is to not use steam. So if you wanna try a mat, um, they're a little pricey, um, but like Pat Sloan loves them. She loves them and I've talked to her about it and she's like, oh, I love it. It makes my, cause she doesn't starch. So she's like, it makes my seams super flat. I just don't use the steam. And she usually doesn't use steam. That's just part of her process. So it's kind of, kind of like I've talked about before is whatever works for you is what you should do. So that's the answer to make them not smell is to not use steam. And also there is a brand new spray from Wooly Felted Wonders that we got last week that you can spray on your mat. I haven't tried it. I don't know if it works. I don't even know what it smells like. Um, so that is another option. I can't tell you if it works or not. Um, we went over the cute cuts. Um, so any other questions? We got a lot. <laughs> okay, good. 
let's see. Uh, someone was just asking earlier also if this is posted somewhere later because they have to get back to work. Um, yeah, so afterwards it will be on Instagram, it will be on YouTube, and it will be on uh, Kimberly Stitch Squad. And make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel, our um, Instagram channel, and Kimberly Stitch Squad, and of course, like us on Facebook. And if you can like the videos, it's great for me because, I mean, like, I get more viewers. Uh, more people will get to see my videos, so that's just like a shameless plug for myself. Um, okay, and then we've got a ton of questions. Okay. Um, Jackie is asking, in pink fabric, do you use uh, for your seam line the peaks or the valleys? So, this is where I'm going to get a little controversial. You use the peak but I don't like them. I hate to use the pink edge. So I will trim them off. Um, I was thinking I had a layer pick here, but I don't. So you wanna use the outer edge, the peak. I prefer to just trim it um, and try to make my layer cake or jelly roll work without it, just because I like to sew really fast and sometimes that peak and valley will get into my seam allowance. But the answer is the outside. All right, and Jane is asking, is it too late to sign up for the September Sew Sampler? Call 1-866-826-2069, and I am sure that we have some more. I'm sure there's a couple left. Yeah, and that's customer service, right? Yeah, that's customer service at Fat Quarter Shop. All right, is the Sew and Love Block of the Month closed? Does the book tell how much fabric I need if it's close to new people? So the book, the Block of the Month is closed because um, we just sold so many of those. I haven't sold a Block of the Month that successfully in a long time. Um, on our blog, or if you go to Kimberly Stitch Squad on Facebook and post the question within a minute, I'm sure Peach Latrell will answer because she answers all my stuff for me. And I don't even know her. She's so nice. So um, we have a PDF that we have put together that has all of that information on it. It is not in the book, but it is available for free on our blog, or you can ask me on Kimberly Stitch Squad. All right. Um, and Ruta is asking, will, with the Make-A-Wish pattern, can we make a pillowcase? Pillowcase covers too, are the blocks big enough? So the blocks are six inches and 12 inches. So um, that's, a, that's a cute idea. Maybe I could, you could definitely do like a square pillow that you um, quilt the 12 inch block and then just put a backing on it, but that's not really a pillowcase. But I'm sure you could do a, tw I'm looking at it right now, you could do a 12 inch and then two six inch. That would be cute. Uh, Anna Corinne is asking, are you gonna do some really mini blocks for dolls can you help me on how to make the blocks smaller um, like really small like mini mini so for mini mini um, we have a new book coming out and it is going to be showing to stores and customers at the end of October like around October 24th October 25th it has four and a half inch finished blocks um, we will have videos on those blocks starting next year with um, the author of the book, who I can't give out yet. Um, so we will have that available soon. Um, Jessica is asking, what's the best way to finish seams? So, and that last question also, Kim Deal, K-I-M-D-I-E-H-L, has lots of books with Martingale called Simple Whatnots, and there's a lot of mini quilts in there, and she's got tips um, about how she does all that. So th that would be a good place to start. So for finishing seams, um, for quilting, you don't need to. You just need to do a quarter inch seam. The only time you would not do a quarter inch seam is on the backing. Your seam is supposed to be half an inch. I'm gonna be honest, I have never done that because I don't want to. Uh, I just do a quarter inch seam on the back, but you don't need to finish a seam. If you want to for like a bag or apparel, I would just use a zigzag stitch but I'm like a quilter and don't really do those things. Like if I make, so like last weekend, two weekends ago, I got some fabric from Wyndham that looked like Minecraft that's coming out and I made my son a pillow. I literally made it in 30 minutes and I didn't finish the seams because he is nine years old and he is gonna, you know, destroy that pillow whether it has seams or not. So I just, I take the easy way out and I'll do it. Um, Valerie's asking, what starch do you use? I use, 
And I have, okay, I have a video on YouTube, and I have a video, two videos on YouTube. Kim, um, wait, sorry, Lisa Bonjean of Primitive Gatherings came up with this method. I use faultless premium starch. Um, it says no flaking. This is all I use. There's lots of questions in my group about would you use liquid starch? This is just what I use. Um, I am a creature of habit. If I find something, it works. I stay with it. I don't veer off because um, sometimes I can have a little bit of ADD. So if I just like focus on um, what I can do, I just, anyway, see I'm going off into some other field. But yeah, I use this. Basically what I do is I starch it. And you can tell this is starched. It is, um, I starch it, I put it on PVC pipes in my um, bathtub or in my shower. I also have a closed drying rack. Um, so that is what I do. There's lots of videos out there on um, exactly what I do. Uh, and Ruth is asking, do you pre-wash pre-cuts? No. So I would never pre-wash a pre-cut, especially like a jelly roll would get totally ruined in your, um, washing machine. I actually don't pre-wash ever. I only starch and when I starch it will shrink the fabric. Um, it shrinks it half an inch one direction. The other one direction will not shrink and one direction will because there's a weft and a weave and I don't know the difference but one so if you have a 10 inch layer cake and you want to starch it for a quilt that you're doing for a sew along like I did last weekend I use two layer cakes. That way if it shrinks I um, I have extra, which I know is like a waste, but my seams, like I can do a whole quilt without ripping out one seam. If I don't use starch, I'm just like constantly ripping out because I sew really fast. Um, and I don't, I just like sew, I, literally the petal just goes as fast as it can. So I really need that starch to keep it stiff under the foot so it doesn't move. All right, Alicia's asking, do you find that different brand rulers don't always measure measure exactly the same? Maybe they're off a little bit? So if you're, the rule of thumb to use is when you start a project, use that brand of ruler throughout. I use Creative Grids exclusively. Um, these are my favorite rulers. I um, keep out my square rulers here. And in this drawer are a ton of rulers. So I pretty much just use Creative Grids. That's all I use. Um, and I don't have a problem because I um, use that same brand throughout. But yes, if I was like going to a retreat and I had started cutting my fabric, I would take rulers so that you have the same one and you're not using your friend's rulers. All right. Uh, Susan is asking, any tips on sewing over multiple layers? Often my machine stitches become tiny and irregular. So if you're going through multiple layers, I would use a walking foot. Um, and so when I put my binding on, and especially with this minky, I used a walking foot. And then I also lengthen my stitch a little bit so that the, because when you're going through multiple layers, your stitch length will get shorter. So if you want it to be a little bit longer, just adjust your stitch length up and then you can adjust it back down. And Cindy is asking uh, about the lawn fabric. Wouldn't it wear out more quickly? Yeah. Vacuum? Yeah, it will. All right. Okay. So many questions. This is awesome. Uh, well, Matt, uh, someone said I hate pink edges. Oh yeah, me too. I uh, yeah. How can we get the blue box? So, the spooky box um, is only available to Sew Sampler subscribers right now. If we have any leftover, they will become available to regular um, customers next week. Um, so that's the answer. And the reason we do that is because the Sew Sampler members, um, you know, they're already in the membership and on the spooky box and the jolly box and all the special boxes we do, we do very limited number because um, we just can't get, like holiday fabric is harder to get. So we do fewer numbers. Um, all right, um, Lena is asking, is it hard to get all that starch off your bathroom surfaces when you starch in your bathroom? So what I starch is, um, I starch over my bathtub and my shower. 
So in my bath, and I have little um, PVC pipes. I did not come up with the idea. A lady on my Facebook group gave me the idea. So once a week, I put all those pipes in the bathtub, run hot water, let it sit, let it drain, and it comes right off. And in the shower, you can just run your shower. So um, if it was on like my tile, that would definitely be a problem. Uh, but I keep it over something where I can just throw the, the bathtub water on. All right, Margaret's asking, I am in the Sew and Love block of the month. I made the first month's blocks and didn't starch. Could I starch the remaining blocks or would it create a problem? It would create a problem, so I would not, um, or I would remake the first block. The reason why is when you starch, it pre-shrinks your fabric. So if, for example, if you're making the front of your quilt and you're pre-shrinking it, then the back of your quilt should be starched and pre-shrunk. But I'm gonna be real honest. When, when I made this backing, this is all pre-shrunk. The fabric that goes on the top and the bottom, I'm not starching that. Um, should I? Yeah. Will it shrink different? Yeah. I'm not worried about it. I don't, I don't, I don't really wash my quilts very much. So yeah, that's what you should do. Um, and Cindy was asking, what was the fabric that you used on the back of the ghost quilt again? Is it like minky? It is minky. It is Shannon fabric. It is the color silver. So if you go to the, sh go to Fat Quarter Shop, Shannon fabrics, 90 inch wide. We have lots of colors. Um, I couldn't decide between the white and the, um, the silver. And the white just wasn't as white as my Kona white on the front. And so I went with gray. Plus, um, my kids, you know, they're kids, like they sit, these, most of the quilts that they use, there's some on their bed, but um, most of them are just used on the couch, and uh, even though they're, you know, what do they eat on the couch? Brownies, popcorn, so their hands are, you know, they're going to get messed up, so I'd rather it be hidden. Um, and Betty's asking, do you spray base the Mankey backings? No. Oh, okay, so spray base. So I take all my quilts to... A long arm quilter so no I, I think you could spray base them I mean I think it would work like normal the other side is flat it's a polyester and it's flat so I think it would do the same thing as cotton yeah, I think in some of the um, Shannon videos we're posting she shows how to spray base them okay so we're yeah so we'll have some videos on that coming up uh, and Brenda's asking when does the jolly box come out Jolly box. Oh, so we had a jolly box last year, and maybe we'll have one this year. And I don't know the date, but it will be closer to like November. All right. Um, and Lori's asking if I join the sew sampler right now, will I have access to the boo box? Yes. Call customer service. All right. Um, and that number is one eight six six eight two six two zero six nine. They also have an email, right? Service? Oh, yeah. Service at fatquartershop.com. All right. Um, and Gwen is asking, did you quilt the ghost quilt yourself? No. So I have a long arm quilter. His website is mylongarm.com. And um, he only does pantographs. He doesn't do anything custom. So like Gina Tell is great. She does custom. I actually just do pantographs on my quilts. Um, so he does uh, those. So um, that is his website, and his name is Mike. All right, I'm just going to take a couple more questions here. Um, Zoe on Instagram was asking, what kind of chair is that that you were sewing on? So the chair that I have has been asked a lot of times. I might have to get a new one because of it. It, is, it was made by either Horn or Koala. I cannot remember which one. I bought it probably four or five years ago, maybe even six years ago. Um, it is discontinued. Um, and I bought it at my local sewing store. They had like, you know how like your sewing machine stores have like 40% off chairs or 20% off cabinets. When I went in that day, they had a sale. So I bought one and then I needed another one so that I wouldn't have to always move from my desk to my sewing machine. So I bought a second one like a couple years later, but it is discontinued now. Okay. Um, and someone was asking on Instagram if you sell large cuts for backings. Yes, so we have a page if you go to Fat Quarter Shop and you search by theme, there's a theme for wide backings. And I love wide backings because um, if I'm in a like hurry, but I do, um, 
but I do like to do piece backings. So if I was gonna do a wide backing, I would probably cut like a diagonal on it and throw in a label. I can show you how I did that. Um, hmm. I don't think I have the quilt here. I can bring it and then I can show you um, kind of how I would throw a label into a wide back because there is a way to do it and I can show you how I did that. But yes, love wide backs. Um, I love piece backs also. So I like to, it just kind of depends on, I guess, deadlines. All right, and then last question here. Um, Caroline's asking, if you start buying the sew sampler in the middle of a project like the barn quilt, um, do you get the other blocks or how do you do it so that you can make the whole sampler? So to make the whole sampler, we have PDFs available online and paper versions of the barn blocks for the previous ones. And so it's a low price. All you have to do is go online, Fat Quarter Shop, search barn blocks. They'll pop up and you can buy the ones you want. And you can see like a picture of it so you can see if you like, like it before you buy it. Alrighty. Um, and... There was just one question here to clarify. Um, they were just asking if the links to everything we talked about are in the description. And yes, they are. Yeah, so everything's in the description. Make sure to follow us on YouTube. Like our videos when you watch us on YouTube. Comment. We always answer back. Uh, if you want direct access to ask me a question, you can be on Facebook at Kimberly Stitch Squad. Follow us on Instagram. If you want to become a YouTube member for $4.99, you will get things like coupons, um, free patterns, um, you, and you, we're also going to do AMAs on there where you can just ask me anything. Um, so we're going to be doing one at 1045. So, so if you join before then, yeah. So if you join before then in about an hour, we're going to do an AMA with me. So definitely join. And, um, but all of our regular YouTube members, you're not going to be missing out on any free videos. All right, and we've got a few new members that just joined during the stream, so yeah. welcome. Thank you for joining. All right. And okay, so join me next Friday. Next Friday, I'm going to be showing, um, I'm going to make a cute little project to show you guys, and I'll come up with some other stuff. And, of course, any questions, just let us know, and that's how I come up with the live streams uh, with you guys' ideas. So thanks for watching, and we will see you next Friday.